everyone, it's the call from Wiki. Welcome to episode two of the Dribblers Pod. We've got Meshi and Onks with us again. You guys want to do a real quick intro? Let's know about your week and we'll get straight into the sporting action for this week. Let's do it. So I've had a bit of a hectic week. Sports been going on. Had cricket on Saturday in 35 degrees out west where you don't want to be when you've been living in Coogee for the last year and a half. Um, yeah, sorry for missing out, man. It was a it was a tough day in the AC all day. Sorry for letting you uh, down. <laughs> jealous, jealous. And as you can see, I've been growing this mo six days worth of growth. Pretty proud of it. Not really. It's about six weeks, but keep that hush up. <laughs> what about you? Love Ops? it. Is the mo going to stay longer? Because I don't. I need to know when I can hang out with you again. No, no, no. Maybe another week. Talk to all you right. tomorrow. All right, I'll catch you in a week then. Um, not much from my end, not much in terms of work or sport. Uh, I spent most of the week in Byron, my first trip up there. Um, sun, sand, ocean, not bad, can't complain. Um, would have liked 35 degree heat, but got caught in the rain one day. But other than that, um, yeah, nothing much. Any, Is it true what stories? they say about Byron, by the way? What happens if Byron stays in Byron? They say many things about Byron. What What are you referring to exactly? Which part? Well, my background, my background says it all. <laughs> <laughs> if you mean street concerts uh, with people, have you heard about Nimbin? By the way, it's basically like a weed capital, right? The police turn and blind. I've only heard good things, but uh, not, nothing I know <laughs> about. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, true, true, true. yeah. Good things. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Now, sick. All right, we'll get some photos of Onks if we can, and we'll put them up on the <laughs> on the next pod. Oh, but yeah. we should That's say, fun. we should say, like this this week since we did the last episode, feels like a long time because I remember after we recorded this, our group chat was going off. People were eagerly awaiting the first episode. Onks thought he was going to get a blue tick. I don't know if you've gotten it yet, Onks. Have you? Well, that's why I went to Byron to, you know, increase my chances of getting that blue tick. But I think I did damage to it, if anything. So, where'd you, you, where'd you say you touch like Chris Hemsworth driveway? Surely that has something to do with the blue tick. Yeah, well, that's why I went there. I thought, hey, if me and old mate can hook up and make like a TikTok or reel or something, then maybe I can get that blue tick real quick. <laughs> but no, nah, the police got called, and then yeah, we don't, um, uh, we don't have to talk about that anymore. <laughs> My, my closest to that was um, State of Origin this year, being blind drunk at the star, and I saw Spud Carroll, <laughs> and I got him on like <laughs> I saw Spud Carroll in like a meat eating, uh, meat fighting contest, and I did a TikTok with him in the background. Do you reckon the Blues are gonna win? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're like twenty nil down at halftime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get the blue tick there either. I think we're all doing as much as we can to hinder our chances of getting that blue tick. We need to change this act, right? Uh, agree, agree. Yep. That's nah, sick. All right, well, let's get into it. Um, I didn't do too much this last time, but uh, starting with our pod, the Dribblers, as we've decided to call it, shout out to Shimzo for giving us that suggestion. Uh, we've obviously had our pod uh, with Wiki. We're doing two different podcasts for cricket. One, just general cricket, World Cup coming up, World Cup semi finals coming up this week. Um, we've got BBL Supercoach, NBA and NFL. Obviously, it's been awesome sort of chatting to you guys. We're going to go into NBA and, and soccer soon, um, but I'm also doing one with Jacob from Tripod covering NBA and NFL, like getting to know, getting to know those sports quite well but um yeah a lot of stuff coming out from wiki just google wiki link tree you can check out the community and everything else but let's get into let's get into the dribbler stuff um meshi you want to hit us up with some with some nba what's been going on this week Let, let's go i reckon it's been a quite a hectic week there's been a few headlines draymond getting ejected some players having <laughs> some absolute massive games um yeah there's been a bit going on but i thought this week i'd focus on a couple of teams that have caught my eye um through the week so I think we'll start off with the Clippers. They added a former MVP in James Harden <laughs> to the team. And that man has just caused absolute trouble in the last two places he's been. And the first, what, is it four games now that they've played? Uh, yeah. it, it's not working. It's definitely not working. Um, just watching their games, their defense, their offense with four old men essentially past their prime superstars. Uh, they're definitely struggling. I think one of them's going to have to bite the bullet and go to the bench uh, if their ego will let it. But otherwise, I think they're in absolute shambles. What do you reckon, Ox? You been watching any of their games? Yeah, well, I had high hopes for them. Uh, not because, um, not just because James is old mate, the beard is joining them, but 
Also, they have Kawhi, PG, Russ, plenty of players with uh, championships and a lot of playoff experience, but that experience has been put to really poor use after going zero for four. They also lost their last game against uh, the bottom-ranked team in the NBA. So that tells you everything you need to know about who's won that trade. Um, I don't know about Harden. The thing is, like, he hasn't won a ring yet, but anywhere he's gone, he's got everything he's wanted, and then he's <laughs> princessed his way out of the out of the team and left the left the situation in shambles. So this is probably the Clippers' last chance to win a ring. I would say in this. I in think this I season. agree. Yeah with this core group. Um, look, the Clippers fan in me, the Kawhi fan in me wants this to turn around, but seems like they've succumbed to the Harden curse. Um, whereas um, Philly look like they are absolutely flying. Am I right? Uh, yeah, Philly Philly have been great. And I think just going back to your Harden uh, not winning a ring, I'm sure one of the clubs that he's frequented in the past in a couple of cities might have given him an honorary ring. For spending some money in there, uh, but Who Philly, you know, oh, you, you know the clubs he goes to. We don't, we don't need. To do oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit! Oh, this is so good that even it. I know about this. I'm actually yeah. seen like a uh, LinkedIn post, yeah, right, a LinkedIn yeah. post where like a data person, I forgot who it was now, yeah. a LinkedIn post where they did like analysis of all the clubs that he's out uh, frequented. Throughout the yeah. stands and all like little like flashing lights that I got across yeah. all the clubs he's been to. It was actually sick. Yeah. I don't know about this. He's just it's on the league that is the people that pays <laughs> all <laughs> the people champion. I love it. <laughs> the best analytics I saw was a post on Reddit where it compared his performances to the cities with go. the best clubs. That's and uh, the cities with the best clubs ha had absolutely shambolic performances. <laughs> so funny. It's so funny. Maybe that was the reason he wanted to leave Philly. But like, I think, yeah, Philly have been... I'm glad he's actually left Philly. They look great this year. Maxi has just gone to another level. Like, I, don't, I was not expecting this from him. I thought he'd definitely improve. But dropping 50 in, what, the eighth game of the season, he looks right at home next to Embiid. They look great together. And they're both putting in, not just offensively, but on the defensive end of the floor as well. So they a good tight unit. Um, there was some sad news to come out of uh, Philadelphia earlier. I think it was yesterday where um, Kelly Oubre, one of their, I guess, shining stars early in the season, um, got hit, got run over um, next to his res residence. So he's been in hospital for a day, I think. And then, yeah, I think that he's going to miss quite a few weeks with some uh, injuries. But again, yeah, Philly have looked amazing. I don't know if you've watched any of their games live, Onks, but they they look amazing. I've watched uh, a few of their games live and it seems like they are much better without Harden. Uh, everyone on that team plays defense. Everyone contributes on both ends. Obviously, it seems like Maxi and Embiid are running the show, but it's nice to have that one guard, one big uh, that's it. Obviously, you've got last year's MVP on that team, so yeah. you're not going to struggle too much. But the more the more you see their games, obviously, what are they now? Uh, seven, Six and, and two, seven and one, or something. Yeah, seven, yeah. Something. They've only lost one game, but they look they look really really good, and all the role players um, are doing doing their job too. So, and then Embiid came out this week, and a reporter asked him, "Hey, like, what do you think's changed now?" And he just said, "There's no egos on this team," which that which. Um, which is definitely working in their favour. So, yeah, Philly's looking really, really good. And I think another person to mention and chuck in there is Nick Nurse. He's been great for them. Obviously, a championship-winning coach with the Raptors. And, yeah, I think he's got everyone to commit on that defensive end. And as we all know, defence wins championships. Yeah, 100%. And quick, quick one on James Harden. Just wanted to, to butt in. How old is he? Do you guys know? Late 20s? No, I think he's about 30 <laughs> Yeah, mid oh, early older. 30s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's your age, ah, isn't it? Damn it! Oy. Oy, who's the old? Oh, damn! I'm the oldest. Yeah, really <laughs> are you are you basically <laughs> saying that Nicole could suit up for the Clippers tomorrow? Ah, it's like a baby. Yeah, let me let me get going. Now, the reason I asked that because obviously, like you know, following a lot of AFL and NRL, a lot of Aussie sport, like there's always that talk around, like you know, the the person with the personality issues causing chaos around the team, whatever. 
usually it's at like the sort of like start or maybe in the middle of people's careers and then they've got that like nice little time maybe two three years out where they're like you know like they finally get the message that this is it like i better get my act together or i'm done but does Harden have time left in his career to have that time or is he cooked it, oh i think he definitely does but it's it's all ego it's all you know he's been a, a star for so long it's about being okay mm. if i want to win a championship i'm going to do it for the team and you know not not take that burden on himself and just let go man that sounds like onks when he used to come to cricket he used to come in with like his fucking with his uh beach shorts ready to go with like sunscreen it's just like six pack and everything and we're all here with our like like dad bodies and stuff <laughs> feeling like shit oh all you had to do was play for the team and we would have been sweet man uh, yeah that was, that was all fine until the weather hit 35 degrees and yeah you know, <laughs> And you mean six pack of beer, right? I don't know what other six packs you're talking about. But we play what Division oh. 800 in Parramatta, so there's no six packs other than these there. Oh man, Onks has been modest, but uh, yeah, we'll get some photos out from some of our cricket games in the morning. Yeah. Onks just rocking up. Looks like he's ready to go to the beach, and he's got to uh, chill out with us. Um, the, don't forget uh, the bucket hat. Like oh, true. Yes, of course. Bucket hat guy, yeah. big man, Onksy. Blessed oh, us. With, I know blessed what... us with his presence. I don't know what photos you're talking about, but you and I need to have a chat offline, yeah? <laughs> I, I swear I saw you in a photo with James Harden, and it wasn't a day. <laughs> That's why. Why do you think the beard's getting long? I, I'm the system. I'm just going to start rocking up to cricket games and yelling, I'm the system. Over and over again. <laughs> I'm going the other way, clean shaven. Yeah. But, um, Looking good, man. Is, is, it, uh, is it too early to start sort of like making sense of which teams are likely to sort of get close to winning it all in the NBA or sort of two, three weeks, you can kind of start to tell what's going on. Um, I think it's always fine to go the early crow. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, yeah, there's definitely teams that have looked amazing and have like already clicked even with new additions and they, they'll they probably just improve going further and further um, through the season unless injuries hit. Um, the last team that I think is, it's my team. Obviously, I wore the Steph jersey last week. Got my Warriors top on this week. Hey. Always with them, always with them. But yeah, they are struggling this year. The offense looks terrible. Someone get my man Steph some help, please. He's averaging 30, and the next high score is averaging 16. Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Someone get him some help. Clay looks like us. Wiggins looks like us. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know. I don't know what the what the problem is. It's a, it's a little bit shambles. Draymond's getting ejected. Chris Paul's back to his cheating ways of diving at people's knees today. <laughs> so we worry about that. Um, he's like, what is he, like the first person over 34 to average 30 a game to start the season? Like, yeah. That tells you everything that you need to know about how much he's he's carrying. Um, forget his ankles. He's going to start having back pain carrying this yeah, team. Yeah, honestly. Anyway, near the playoffs. Um, but still, what, their fourth seed in the West. Um, but it is early days. So, yeah. yeah. Role, I wouldn't say role players because Clay's, Clay's a star, I reckon. But the other yeah. guys need to get their act together. And I think with Clay, he's a notorious slow starter. Well, he has been over the last few seasons. <laughs> so, hopefully, as it gets a bit closer to Christmas, January, that's when he starts hitting his straps. And hopefully, that's when he can start helping Steph a bit to get his fifth ring. Um, and we've gone back to Chris Paul, man. Every time I see the back of his head, it reminds me of a Malteser. I just keep <laughs> it looking at it. It's an absolute, it's just a perfect copy of a Malteser. No, oh, if he wasn't on the just Warriors. About that, uh, what was that? 9.30 p.m. It's about that late night snack time, eh? That's it. <laughs> yeah, my man's getting craving sitting in his room. Right <laughs> I Got love it. Um, and I asked, uh, sorry, Mesha, I asked you this last time with um with last week. You said only a couple of weeks in, a bit too early to have a punt. I um just before we started this pod, I was having a punt on the women's cricket big bash. Um, NBA ready to start having a couple of bets on? Uh, I think so. I think uh, this week, I reckon even tomorrow, I might have a quick look at a couple of games, and I I think you can definitely make some assumptions. I'll still probably hesitate to go on many of the player markets because he's. The rotations are still quite early on. Like I said, it's about, what, 10 games in for each team. But I think team markets, um, over-unders, handicaps, I think you can definitely start trying to make some money off them, I think. 
trying. Oh, that's not the wiki trying. way. Trying. <laughs> Claiming. Uh, I love it. But yeah. I think um uh, I think going talking about betting markets, uh the T Wolves are a team that have started off quite well this season. It seems as though they're all clicking. Um and I think at the moment uh they're the number one ranked defense. So I mean having Rudy Gobert who's what won defensive player of the year three times, um uh, you you'd expect that from him, but I think Kat next to him starting to look comfortable. And I think the team's really run by the Ant-Man now. I think that's his team. He gets everyone uh, through their paces and they, they're starting to look good. They're a tough team to match up against as well. So I think at the moment you can get roughly around 50, 51s for them to win the whole the whole thing. Uh, if they get home court advantage and a couple of the right matchups, I think they can definitely go deep. But again, I'm a big fan of the early crow, so... Take that as you will. <laughs> now we're talking. For me, it's like it's gotta be at least like thirty or forty to one to get me interested. Like with the <laughs> with the women's big match I was watching, I had a man a player of the match play at sixty one to one, which got me excited. The lines and turtles not my go, but get me into a fifty one long shot, I'm keen. Yeah. Yeah. As some of our as some of our less betting educated friends would say, easy money, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if it doesn't have ten legs, is it even really a, a real bet? You know, you got to have ten legs yeah. at least. Yeah. Well, I can give uh, you some fifty to one odds, but yeah, you're right. There'll be like fifteen legs in there. <laughs> Man, I'll give you no, fifty to one. Though, one right? I'll give you the fifty to one that I ate a vegetable this week. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Um, should we? Uh, should we get into some soccer? Fill us in. What's been going on? Yeah, pretty exciting. Um, I think it's super uh, ironic that this time last week we were speaking about Spurs being the undefeated team in the Premier League. <laughs> and then they, they've since gone on to lose two in a row uh, back-to-back. Absolute shambles against Chelsea. Uh, they got absolutely battered. Um, they got two red cards in that game. But this weekend they absolutely had no excuse. They have conceded two 90-minute like, extra time um goals against the Wolves and yeah. uh, it just goes to show how how evenly matched the league is um, this year. So City are top again, then Liverpool and you have Arsenal and you have Spurs and Spurs in there too. But the I think the biggest thing I wanted to point out was Aston Villa of all clubs are sitting in the top yep. five and there is literally three points. So one win difference between number one and number five. The reason why Aston Villa are sitting in the top five is that they've actually scored the second highest amount of goals in the whole league. So whatever Emery is doing there, whatever brand of football he has them playing um, is is definitely worth a, a look in. Like it, it's time to start watching Villa games because they are they are tearing up the league right now. Insane. Maybe it's the old uh, Philly Philly treatment that they they've got. They're just bought in together. Yeah, it's like you you get rid of your star players and then you have these academy guys coming through. You yeah. actually have guys committed to the team and they're playing they're playing some really, 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 really good football. I think that um Spurs game that you're talking about with the red cards, that was so rough. Rough on them. But in a in a professional league, going down to nine is it, it's a tough <laughs> I could see like that four, I think that fourth goal that Chelsea yeah. scored. You see Son in the background, and he's like nearly in tears. Like he's just so exhausted from running around. I'm absolutely convinced that like, they lost because we talked about it the day before. <laughs> I have, I have I no doubt how... in my mind. Yeah, Maybe I just get on the She said, um, "Professional." Yeah, Messi said, "Professional league," because we're meant to be playing with eleven in park cricket. We end up playing <laughs> seven to nine players almost every Saturday, so we're used to that. Yeah, but when we can win, they can't. <laughs> Hey. Like, the the Spurs team could have turned up hungover and had weddings like half the Parramatta team every single week and they couldn't have played any worse. Like it was terrible. Um yeah, as as Meshi said, that first red card, a bit controversial. The second one is what happens when you're tired, you're conceding goals, and then Nicholas Jackson scored the easiest hat trick uh, of all time, and then he pretended like he was prime Ronaldo oh. at Madrid. So, <laughs> adding insult to injury, that that was a bit of a disgrace. Like, have some, have a little bit of pride. I don't know if you saw that. 
I, I saw that celebration and I was like, mate, you, you're playing against yeah. nine dudes. But it's yeah. like eight guys in the keeper. Like, what are you, yeah. why are you so excited? Yeah, this guy, it's like if you played cricket against seven people on a Sunday and you scored 100 and you were celebrating <laughs> yeah. like you just won the World Cup. Like, it was that bad. Um, that sounds like, um, that sounds like a Captain Raj when he brings himself on to <laughs> bowl against kids and yeah. you bowl out like the 11 to 14 year olds just go bang, 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 bang. bang. <laughs> Well, he cleans up the tail for four for one and then he celebrates <laughs> against the 17 year olds yeah, yeah. Uh, we know that feeling too well absolutely love it you know what's awesome though like i, I noticed when we were doing the pod last week it was kind of cool doing one with, with a couple of your mates but i noticed that obviously meshi follows a bit more basketball onks follows a bit more soccer and i was kind of here to talk shit um but it's worked out perfectly because i'm going overseas i think me me and uh, meshi are both going overseas going our different ways and coming up but um, I'll be in India, and the soccer will actually be on at a good fucking time. Perfect. So I'm so keen to get on my goal because the two guy are uh, two of the four guys that I work with are huge soccer fans. So I'm so keen to rip into some late night soccer there. Get on my first goal score event. I cannot wait. Oh, love it. I won't know the guys. I won't know who I'm getting on. But anyone 31 to one and above, I'm on. Just just when that goalkeeper up. scores. Yeah. <laughs> just a heads up. It won't be late <laughs> night there. It'll be about. Three, I think the first game is maybe 3 p.m. and then 5.30 no. p.m. Yeah, no, because the game's on 1 a.m. 1 a.m. here. So that's like, or not late night, but it'll be like an evening it'll game, be 7 evening. a.m. or whatever. It'll be, it'll, be, yeah, it'll be a very watchable time. It'll be like 6, 7, yeah, a decent time. Yeah, I'll have time to sort of sneak into a few drinks and just sort of watch the game. I'll be working all day, of course. It's a work business trip, just to be I clear. Understand. But uh, after that, it'll be great. This is the same drinks that uh, Ong's had in Bar. I always... <laughs> Again, uh, allude to my background over here. <laughs> is this um, is this exactly like the work trip that was just taken to Thailand uh, a couple of weeks ago? Very oh yeah. It's, yeah, like you gotta you gotta meet up with your work team people. Like you guys go to the city and have drinks in um, Martin Place or whatever. Uh, I just have to fly across the world. It's it's a tough life. But someone's got to do the hard yards, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. No, I love that. Love that. You gotta celebrate. That's sick. Oh yeah! Did you get um any chance to watch any other soccer while you your mates were at the concert? Onks, you were sort of on your phone, just sort of watching all the <laughs> Champions League and whatever else. Yeah, I had to get my prep in for the podcast. So I told everyone to have, stop having fun for about half an hour while I did my research <laughs> on a on a Saturday night in Byron. Um, uh, there was actually some Champions League midweek. Um, so a few teams already qualified: Bayern, Sociedad. Um, but uh, City obviously have qualified for the next round, so we are already four group games in. There's two group games left. Um, the two biggest key points, I guess, from the week is Barcelona was one win um, from qualifying already against Shakhtar, but they, they lost 1-0 actually away. So they're in a bit of strife at the moment. And then United with the 4-3 thriller away to Copenhagen. But the funny thing is that when, like, yeah, we're playing good games, this is why it's really hard to be a United fan right now, but we're never on the <laughs> right end. Of, we're never on the right end of the scoreline. So um, I was hoping I wouldn't have to talk about them on the pod, but the game was was good enough to to do that. So not too long before the um, the knockout stages now. Um, but yeah, the usual the usual crew have, have gone through at the moment. Nice. Love it. I, I thought it was actually a typo. So, sorry, I was saying, I thought it was no. a typo when Onks had uh, Shakhtar written in there. I was like, I know this bloke's English isn't great. What the hell is Shakhtar? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell where, where is Shakhtar? Seriously. It's actually a little village in Pakistan. It's not a football team. <laughs> <laughs> Do they play with nine? Saying, Do they play with nine? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, I'm not going to lie, I haven't followed much Champions League this year because I'm not used to Arsenal being in there. So it's a <laughs> bit of a bit of a surprise and a shock that they're, they're, yeah. they're there. Uh, but yeah, I haven't followed much. Uh, I've definitely followed a lot more Premier League. But when, when, has, does the cha- like, when does the Champions League come to a head? Is it around Christmas time and stuff or like way later, like next year? Uh, no. So the around Christmas time is when the group games will wrap up. But then February, the knockouts will kick off. And usually yep. it's the week directly after all the leagues finish up. So because obviously uh, they want to 
have the audience and have the whole market. The whole, I mean, it's the biggest club competition in the world, right? It's all yeah. of Europe's top leagues, Sick. and you have two teams come out of it. So, if the Premier League wraps up in wraps up in May, the Champions League final will be in, um, like, yeah, a week or two, week or yeah. two after. That's sick. Yeah. Okay. Because just with all this new sport, like I'm trying to get a gauge of like what to follow when, because I'm, I'm going to love that time zone, man. Um, actually, I don't know about where, where you're sort of heading off to, but with India, I know it's five and a half hours behind Australia. So all yeah. the late night stuff in Australia, which usually sucks because it's a pain in the ass, will be like perfect. Like as you're having dinner, you can watch whatever you want. Um, it. But yeah, it's going to be so good. I don't think I've been, uh, I don't know actually how blessed I am with time zones where I'm going. I think it's about 16 to what, 18 hours behind. So, okay. I mean, the US sports will be perfect for me. So I'll be able to yeah. dive into them. I mean, I'm on holidays. So every day, <laughs> every day we're just watching sport. Um, but yeah, I don't think any other, I, don't, I actually have no idea what time zone the UK and stuff falls into <laughs> from the US. Uh, but yeah, we'll figure it out once we get there. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you guys, obviously we're not really talking about NFL, but are other of you guys, like, would you guys ever watch the um, the Super Bowl? Because I've said for 13 years, ever since I've been an adult, I've been like, oh, I'll go watch the Super Bowl in the city. Never happened. I'm so keen to do that if, if we've got a few mates keen. I think uh, once uh, Ongs gets his blue tick and he can afford it, well, yeah, yeah. I think he can fly with all of us out there and we can go watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. I didn't think you were talking about watching in the city. I thought you meant go to the yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah, going there. And I was going to say to you, I'm about. And I was going to say to you, I'm about five hundred thousand followers and fifty k short. But you know, give us give us three or four weeks, and maybe we can make it this year. I reckon try to break up Taylor Swift and Kelsey. Oh, just get in there. Yeah. <laughs> break them break them up and do what? Date Kelsey? Is yeah, that okay, the yeah. Date Kelsey just for one Super Bowl. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I actually thought when Meshi was leading up to a joke about Onks there, I thought it was going to say when uh, when Onks actually starts to get allowed into places, we can go with him and actually get his ID and stuff ready. <laughs> Do you still get asked for ID, Onks? That's terrible. Uh, with this beard, no. I, I get stopped a lot though and body searched. <laughs> <laughs> you get taken into a room or just out in public? Uh, no, they don't even give me the dignity of that. It's usually just out in public, man. <laughs> Man, I don't know what it is. One time, this small airport in Hawaii thought I had drugs on me, and they just, this this yellow dot just kept popping up on their screen. And even I was panicking. Even even I was like, "What do I have something on me?" Right, let's get I've the just shit been out. to Byron. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you coming from, Amsterdam? <laughs> That's actually not funny. Like I've been in that situation before a couple of times. Yeah. And like, yeah. if you are in Amsterdam or Phuket, obviously one of the places where it's legal, yeah. you're just so scared. You've got like something yeah. left over in your pocket. But uh, anyway, no. not a problem that we've got to deal was, with. Was the yellow yeah. dot turmeric or? Yeah, it was just turmeric, yeah. <laughs> just bringing spices back. From just for your lattes <laughs> in the morning, mate. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I love it. Nah, sick. Okay, well, we, we've done a pretty good job, I reckon, the last couple of episodes. Um, just talking about what we actually plan to talk about, but I swear this Sunday, if India does win the Cricket World Cup, you're going to have to hold me back. I'll cap myself. We'll cap ourselves in a, a minute or two, but it's going to be hard to lay off. But um, yeah, we, we won't go into it too much. Are any of us going to have voices yeah. or what? I don't think any of us is going to have a voice left if India win. No, nah, it's, it's pretty funny. Like when uh, you guys, or Meshi, you might have been, might have been a bit young when um, India won their World Cup in 2011. You would have been just about to turn 18? 16. I was. 16. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were in uni and I still remember like I had a uni presentation on the Monday and I think India won the World Cup on a Saturday night, I think. And I just had no voice. And the poor, uh, the lecturer thought it's because I was sick. And I was like, oh, sorry. Everyone felt so bad for me. In my mind, I'm like, dude, India just won the World Cup. I don't give a shit about this. So <laughs> I don't get it. I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that one was special though. First, first win after a uh, front since '83. So, if anything, that one was definitely worth celebrating. Hey, but like, that cool. one was for Sachin. This one's for Coley, the king. Oi, he's, getting, he's chills. He's getting chills. <laughs> Yeah, well, next week we can uh, color coordinate. We can uh, we can all wear some blue, get some India hats on or some shit. But uh, for now, unfortunately, there's still two games to go. But uh, Australia's in the semi-finals as well. So Australia, South Africa. India, New Zealand. I'm sure whoever's listening to this, you'll uh, you'll likely have a team in the race. So we'll catch you guys uh, in seven days' time. We're actually like, I'm kind of surprised. Onks is um, pulled up. All right, Onks, you told us you were sick. Are you sure? You look oh, all right. Sick of, 
Just sick of you guys in this pod. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Two episodes in. Two it's like a boyfriend did. breakup. It's like One Direction breaking. No, I don't know what it was, man. But then you, I don't know, just picked up something in Byron. Yeah, he did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, anyways, as usual, I think what we're planning to do is like get the um, get the pod. We've got the video on YouTube, audio on all over the place. We'll get it out through our personal Instagrams. But yeah, if you Google Wiki Link Tree, Law be there. As I said before, we've got cricket cricket stuff got nba nfl um and we'll have a whole bunch more but anyways we'll catch you next week um hope you enjoyed the dribblers episode two